there's no way I'm ever going to act. It's, I don't, you know, there was a horrible feeling. Welcome to The Story Thinker, a Webtoons and Witcher podcast for superfans with scene-by-scene -scene analysis. Featuring sharp co-hosts for a fuller picture, we dive deep into character psychology, relationships, and theories. We'd love it if you could like, subscribe, comment, and rate us on all podcast platforms and social media. For bonus content, you can support The Story Thinker on Patreon. Let's begin. So, hi everyone, and welcome to a very special episode. We have here with us Nathaniel Jacobs, who not only played Everard on The Witcher, but also was involved in the production. And um, so, editorial PA and second assistant director, which we'll talk about because I'm not quite clear what those terms mean, but I'd love to hear all about what that, what kind of work that entailed. So, before we start, I guess let's just hear more about um, you and your background and where you came from. Um, for me, that's always curious because I think a lot of people feel like getting into something like movies is for like, oh, other people, like I'm not the right person or I can't do it. I don't come from the right place. I don't have the right connections. So I'm always curious to see how like people got to where they are, like where they came from. Sure. I started uh, not officially acting, but I started out as an extra when I was 18 many, many years ago. Um, just because for me at the time, it was another source of money when not doing my, let's say my normal nine to five job. And doing that, I got to meet some great people and it just sort of progressed. And I was start, you know, starting to be given lines in certain things that I did. And I started to find a bit of a passion for it. Um, so I'd sort of, you know, apply for jobs here and there. And it just sort of started rolling and snowballing. And then I sort of got into acting per se. Um, and so like you know i did a few short films and other small smaller gigs let's say but while still doing a nine to five and then uh let me think when i first started what was i doing when i first started it was some office job at a water company i think uh i think uh, and that was actually like the very first time that i'd come to soho uh, my very first, yeah, my very first gig as an extra was in Soho, and it's crazy now that I'm almost living in Soho. <laughs> so, yeah, um, so that was that, and I, I never actually thought about acting properly. I never ever trained, or oh, I did like two short courses later in life, like a two-week intensive course, and then a ten-week course. I was like once a week, I'd come into London and do a, you know, um, a, a lesson. But that was literally it. So I've had. What, 20 days of learning or something like that um but in doing so i've managed to you know progress in and perform at the royal court theater and other bits it's it's been quite a quite an amazing journey um so it was always when i did sort of think about getting into this industry it was more for you know trying to act then years later let's say this is now fast forward to 2018 i had moved to london for an acting gig um and i'd been speaking to people that i'd met along the way um about trying to do something behind the scenes in production so when i'm not acting i'm still in the industry um, and learning and doing things but you know I'm meeting people as well as working and one that like, earlier in that year so this is going back to about the March beginning of the year March sort of time I'd spoken to um, an editor who would let me sit in with him for a day uh, just to see if it's something that I'd be interested in and I was like that seems interesting yeah why not uh, <laughs> and he introduced me to a, an assistant that he had been training up so we started speaking for about a week or two. And he was like, if there's ever anything that comes up, we can have a trainee on board. I'll give you a shout. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so like I do uh, secret cinemas, uh, Romeo and Juliet in the summer. That's why I moved to London. And then after doing that, it was like, now I'm here. I sort of want to stay here. You know, I, I need a, a proper job. <laughs> uh, I, I was Where looking for living anything. For, for London? Um, up near Cambridge, uh, where I'm uh, originally from. Industry there? Um, not really. It's like little bits. There's a really big gaming developer uh, there, um, 
but not really like film and TV and so forth. So yeah, I was like, now I'm in London, I want to stay here. I'll take any job just to be able to make money and stay in London now. Um, and out of the blue, like whatever higher power there is, thank you. Mm-hmm. I got a call uh, one day from this assistant who I'd been speaking to early in the year. And he said, uh, I'm just about to start a job, uh, a Netflix job on uh sorry i'm about to start this job for netflix and we can take on a trainee are you interested i was like yes absolutely and he was like okay let's go for coffee went to meet him uh for coffee uh and the editor and sat down he told me what the show was and it was like it's the witcher and i know the witcher from the video games uh because i'm a big gamer Mm. i i played I played a teeny tiny bit of the first, which nobody ever seemed to play. Um, but at the second, and I delved a lot more into the third, but still to this day, haven't had the time to complete it. Um, but I have, you know, played them and I sort of knew the Witcher world vaguely through that, but not really for the books. Anyway, so he was like, you know, it's the Witcher and Netflix. And I was like, I'm in. If you have me, I'll absolutely do it. And um, but incidentally, that same day, another job came through. Literally, oh, wow. as I got out of that in- interview, I had an email saying, you know, there's another job for another really big company. Um, do you want to come for an interview? So I found them was like, I'm in the city now. I'll come and see you. They're like, yeah, absolutely. This is perfect. So because I didn't really have that much money, I ran across the city oh, wow. to go have this interview. Went really well. And they said, um, you know, we'll let you know by the end of the week. And which was due to start, I think it was the 29th of October. This other job was due to start the 5th. So I was like, I'll take this one. It's earlier. Mm. Anyway, waited, waited. They had production issues and it was put back. Um, but I sort of tend to the off like, well, I'm interested in the Witcher. The other one, it was a good job, but I'm not that passionate about it. So I said yes to the Witcher job and one of the best decisions I've ever made. And, you know, the rest is history, as they say. Wow. So um, season one, I was on as a um, trainee assistant editor, but credited as a um, editorial PA. Mm-hmm. And that was basically learning the ropes of how the editorial, how the editorial um, process and workflow worked. I had done silly little music videos when I was younger and cut them and, you know, shot them and, you know, um, and it was sort of like, uh, I sort of have an idea of what editing is, but not really. Um, so in that, I learned a whole heap um, of what I now do for, you know, when I'm, anytime I'm not acting, I'm in editorial. Um, and I learned all of that on season one of The Witcher, uh, which is a hell of a starting point. Yeah, right? It's like, mm. starting on one of the top 10 shows on Netflix. <laughs> right um yeah and it's it was insane the team was lovely we had a wonderful time it, uh and then obviously the show it became what it is it's just phenomenal i i sort of really hit the ground running and i you know i'm extremely grateful but at the same time i don't take it for granted at all so yeah, yeah um great. yeah so that was so that's how i got into the editing side of things um and then moving guess, forward can i can i stop it there before we get yes. to talk more about the witcher so it sounds like some this is kind of um surprising to me it sounds like you never really thought about being an actor um till you were 18 like like minimum what did yeah. what did you want to do growing up like what was always your dream <laughs> 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 uh i as a kid you know it'd go from being an astronaut to you know a train driver or something uh, <laughs> i didn't ever really know what i wanted to do and one I, I definitely did not want to be an actor because I remember there was a school performance when I was 11 um, of Jonah Man Jazz. And I got the role of God. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I'd rehearsed my lines, remember them, it was good and fine. To Performing to my peers in the day uh, went well. And then it was the parents at night. The night performance (laughs) was one of the worst experiences of my life. It was, I I can can visualize it now. Everything was going fine. And I know my cue and I'm stood up on this platform off the side of the stage. um, And my line's up and it's the first bit is, then God said. 
that's all I can remember. And I repeated that same line about four or five times. Just And God said, and somebody passed me up the script. And I remember just sort of holding it in my front of my face, like literally like here, trying to hold back tears <laughs> through yeah. embarrassment. Um, and then after that, it was like, net like there's no way I'm ever going to act it's I don't you know there was a horrible feeling um so about hmm, five years later there was an opportunity in school to perform in, in an assembly and for, they were like you know the teachers were like next week you guys are going to do the assembly you can do whatever you want you can dance you can sing you can do whatever um just sign up when you leave okay never thought anything about it for some reason my friends were walking that way but my legs whilst I was looking that way my legs were going that way oh. to sign up and I was like heavily into hip-hop at the time and for some reason never done it before in my life but I said that I'm gonna go rap no. never written a song never attempted anything like it but I now had a week to go right learn perform a song in front of like 300 of my peers and however many teachers um <laughs> and I think it was 13 acts who performed uh at the assembly I was the only one to get a standing ovation wow uh, even though to me I, I fluffed a part of it um nobody else knew but I knew that obviously and then I had to sort of freestyle because I couldn't remember what what the <laughs> lyrics were uh but covered it well and it was in that moment that I was like I I enjoyed the the feeling of being one being able to entertain people and two just you know just the self-confidence it gave me um I I enjoyed performing I, I still didn't think about acting but I was like okay now I'm obviously going to be like a world famous rapper of course of course <laughs> yeah <laughs> overnight um no and then that's the that's why you know I my that's where I was looking to go I left school and went to college and did music technology mm -hmm. um met a DJ there um and there was a time where I was uh we were in the studio and he was just playing some beats on the decks and I was in the booth so I just started rapping and he recorded what I did and played it back and I had no idea he was recording I thought we were just sort of messing about and he was like oh you know do you want to come perform with me uh he was you know, a few years older than me I was 16 he was I think you know uh 18 19 20 something like that and he's like oh come perform you know with this group that I perform with and yeah 16 started performing in clubs which you know over 18 supposedly but <laughs> I just looked asked. older <laughs> yeah nobody asked I looked old um and yeah that was I that's my sort of first foray into getting paid properly for um for entertaining people yeah that's cool so it's I mean I appreciate what you said about how you felt like that you enjoyed entertaining people do you feel since you're doing kind of well, both acting and editorial, is that, do you kind of feel like you're satisfying both of those? Does any one of them speak more strongly to you? Uh, so of late, especially during season two, um, I, a few people have asked me, uh, which I, if I could only do one, which one I do. And I, I've thought about it a lot um, over the past few years. And genuinely, if I can get a balance of the two, that would be ideal because I'd love to do an acting gig, you know, and just focus on, you know, a film or a show or something for, you know, three, four, five months or whatever. Focus on that, take a month out here and then go do an editorial job um, because I feel that the two inform each other very well. Mm -hmm. I learned a lot about um, screen acting through watching the rushes that would come in. So season one, uh, I'd see, you know, the rushes come in, go through all the shots and stuff, and then it would be rushes watching... being like the daily footage before it's edited. Yes, yeah. sorry, yes, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, every single take that's ever shot, <laughs> um, <laughs> and it would be looking at why an editor chose one shot over another, one performance over another, one bit of dialogue over another, and then you see notes from the directors or the producers um and why they think 
you know what shot should be chosen so it's so you'd watch and you go okay i see that in that performance you know i might not agree with that but a whole on the whole i see why it's been chosen um so that i use that to sort of inform a lot of what i do and then from the acting side it would be looking at okay let's give options some directors sort of don't push for options um and some really like having options some want you know it done in a very specific way um for me it's obviously the scenes can be played in you know a multitude of different ways and it's okay let's do let's you know the director says let's do it like this you're okay and then you can go sort of go can i try it like this afterwards or so forth um yeah so i just feel that the two inform each other so i'd I'd ideally like to do both, but if I could only do one, I think it would probably be acting. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm also one of those people I don't like to do only one thing. I like to do a mm. lot of things because yeah. uh, there's so much wonderful things to do. <laughs> okay, can, yeah, of course. I want to say of no. course. <laughs> <laughs> so before we talk a little bit more about the Witcher, what um I was looking through, you know, your IMDB and um I've seen you know your other acting credits. So I guess if you want to pick some highlights to talk about um, things that you liked and what you learned from working on those different roles. Okay. Um, one of the most informative that I did back in 2012 was a short film called The Weight, um, hmm. where it was, I, I remember seeing sort of the, um, the online description of what it was, and it was these two, uh, robbers who got caught or did a bank heist um but it's not actually about the heist it's that they somebody saw somebody saw them uh saw their faces and in doing so they had to kidnap this guy mm. and i like the fact that the original concept is the whole thing it's only i think about six or seven minutes long but the whole thing is just on like the victim slash captures guy's face and you never oh. see uh the the two guys who kidnap him the two robbers um and it's them trying to figure out what to do with him and you know uh i played a character called benny um and jason lee deer played a guy called ronnie and it's basically the, the back and forth between these two where they've got this guy tied up to a chair you know gagged mm -hmm. and the rest of it and that was it was just so intense to shoot um and the concept behind it was so fun and so again tense to watch back it was it was just brilliant that was one of my favorite things that i've done to to date um as far as like sort of short as far as short films go um no, I'm, I'm terrified for what happened to the guy <laughs> <laughs> i'm really nervous <laughs> ask you to say it and spoil it but <laughs> it's and it's good because you don't see it and it's the two of them trying to toy with should they kill him or should we not and i think it was it's benny who initially says you know we, we should kill this guy and ronnie's like well i'm not a killer mm -hmm. um and the dynamic slowly starts to turn mm -hmm. but that's as much as i'll say because okay. yeah, it's, it's a very <laughs> it's a very good short um but i learned a lot from that that was one of my first proper um like heavy dialogue very sort of tight back and forth we would do the whole thing in one take each time we would never stop um so that sort of taught me a lot to be like you know you have to know your lines you have to be on it you have to sort of feel the energy of the situation and you know how it the dynamic changes between the two characters um it was it was fun super fun um Another really, really, really good experience for me, which I think uh, has sort of lived and will continue to live um, as a very important part of this journey was um, performing at the Royal Court Theatre. I never considered myself to be, um, you know, a theatre actor. I would I always wanted to do screen whenever it was like, if ever it had an inkling of, I want to act, it was screen opportunity came to perform at the Royal Court and one is the Royal Court Theatre and two it's theatre and it's the whole thing of I think theatre can keep an actor sharp 
because you know there is no cut there is no let's go again it's you're out there you know if it's a 20 minute show an hour show that's once you're out there you're out there um Mm. and that again it helps you focus it helps you just there's a certain there's a completely different energy about it which is why I thoroughly enjoyed that and the next thing um because it's completely different but similar to standard theater is immersive theater which I again I had no real idea about it before I did it um and that was me neither please don't do this you this is yes, yeah, it's uh, exactly that. So this was secret cinema um, since uh, it was Baz Luhrmann's Romeo and Juliet, and I had a friend who was a producer on the show, who sort of invited me to. So I think you're um, talking about the immersive theater. Yes, um, Romeo and Juliet, um, and it was a friend who was a producer on the show, and she in uh, she invited me to go and. Oh, bu- 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 lost my train of thought to go and audition. And she was trying to tell me what immersive theater is. And I was like, what? So <laughs> this show was running for three hours. Um, and it's purely immersive. Well, the first three hours are purely immersive. The world, the world is built. And as an actor, you, you inhabit a character within the world. And then the audience come in and you live and breathe. Mm-hmm the world and in this case it's like a prequel to the start of the film uh so for us it was like a peace a truce between the Capulets and Montague a peace day and you know I was a I was a Montague so with all my Montague fam it would be like oh hey you know I'd be like lovely to them but as soon as like a Capulet would come along or you know if you had friends who would be big Capulets and Montagues would Montague's be like, yeah, friends, 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 Capulet, hmm. you know? <laughs> um, and so that was like, you lived the world for the first sort of three hours. And then the last couple of hours when you're watching the film, part of it is you bring the film to life as it's playing. So it'd be on a, um, you know, a big screen with a mm-hmm. stage and we'd be, when they were like, dance sections we'd all be dancing if there were like battle fights there would be fights going on it was it's like nothing I'd ever experienced before um and again from an actor's perspective really 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 good to keep you sharp um because every single day is different uh you don't know what you're going to get from people because you obviously have to it's you know there's certain things happening at a certain time so you'd be like okay well you know five minutes I need to be over there but it's working your way over there you don't just cut what you're doing um it yeah it was just truly truly one of a kind I'd never done anything like it and I'd love to do it again because it is so different and so fun even though the film's the same you've got key points that you've got to you know sort of do like little scenes let's say there would always be always be different because you don't know if certain people want to play or not you try and get them to play if they don't you don't force them and you still obviously are the character within the world at all times it's just super fun um so there was that and that was the job oh wonderful like I hated the uh (laughs) the um rehearsal part because I had no idea what I was doing Mm -hmm. some of the guys there truly truly phenomenal actors um, and I'm watching, going, like, w- why was I even chosen <laughs> among these people? They're genuinely, like, amazing, amazing people. And imposter syndrome, mm-hmm. max level. <laughs> but, again, an experience um, that will live with me forever. And that was the job that I moved to London for. Mm-hmm. Um, then, whilst on season one, of The Witcher, I was still doing like little gigs here and there. And a notable one um, was uh, 10 Steps to Murder. Uh, I played, uh, well, I portrayed serial killer Jesse Matthews. Um, that I got purely for, you know, being big and black with dreadlocks. But <laughs> it was, again, it was something super fun to film and tried like it was it was only for the b-roll footage it was 
trying to just sort of understand, you know, who he was, is as a person, the case, um, and just, you know, sort of delve in, because it is obviously something that's terrible and dark, but um, the fact that we, we managed to, you know, bring it to life in such a way um it was just interesting to me and it was it was fun because obviously everybody was lovely and it was you know a fun you know a few days of shooting but still something you know portraying a serial killers you know it is what it is yeah i i remember um i was watching uh the abc murders with uh Eamon Farron yes and, and yeah, Anya. what and Anya's in that, I believe. Yeah, I know it was. Mm. It was very funny because um, <laughs> you know, the, the biggest the, like laugh I had out of that was um, I'm like watching it, and suddenly Rupert Grint pops up, and I am the Harry Potter generation, and obviously, mm-hmm. like when I was a kid, I was like Rupert Grint was gonna be my husband, like obviously, I'm <laughs> of <course>. and, <laughs> and he pops up, and I'm like, I cannot believe that I'm watching this, and I'm watching it because of The Witcher, and I didn't even know that Rupert Grint was in it. It's just hilarious, right? But I was watching an interview with Eamon and he was talking mm. about how like he was trying to get into the mind of, of a killer, which mm. misled me. Uh, I won't try to get any spoilers, but whatever. Um, so, <laughs> but anyway, so that's like similar to, I mean, you know, if your your role in as playing Jesse Matthews is trying to like get into that mind frame. Yeah, it was, and luckily for me, it was like mostly of the shots that I would done, that I'd done rather in a bar or the gym, which, <laughs> You know, I when I do gym when I'm not on like time off like I am now um it was just sort of fun because I again I'd never done boxing but we were in a boxing gym for it and I you know I'd never done boxing never thought about doing boxing but there was the trainer there was like showing me to how to you know hit a bag and how to just sort of hold myself so again it was still learning um but at the same time I'm I do love my gym um so it's good to sort of just sit there and work out even though there were moments where, where I was on the squat rack and they were like, you know, don't need to put like heavy weights on it or whatever. We shoot about the weights, but just you obviously show you're lifting heavy weights and stuff. So it's like, whatever. And there's like, you can actually see the plate and it's like, I think we've got like fives on each end. So it's like the <laughs> as light as it can almost be. But I'm making it look super heavy. It's like, we've got some weak ass legs. There are like fives on there. <laughs> but oh, cheers guys. But no, still fun regardless. <laughs> Yeah, I have a brother who's very into into working out, so he can do a lot. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so I guess getting getting to the wish now. So what was um you started talking about it? You were, you know, training in like the editorial department. So who did, who did you work with on a daily basis and what was your you know daily path? So getting the rushes, choosing the parts and um so I was working, um, season one, I was predominantly working with uh, the first assistant, or first assistants who were uh, Tom Chapman and um, Andrush, uh, Tom and Andrush. But then we had um, Elliot and James, and I learned a whole bunch from these guys. But the editor that I worked closely with was Liana. She was on, edit, um, on episodes one, two, three, seven and eight um but i did work across all the apps hence i got to learn and you know a whole amount by sort of seeing and going through everything but i was doing a lot of the temp sound design in particular so saw clashes in battles footsteps down hallways you know monster sounds um just sort of bringing the world to life it's funny like you know i would get given a scene and the editors you know laid the picture and it's only got the um oh the playback sound so it's completely empty apart from like you know it's episode one scene 14 the battle scene um spoiler alert where iced and calanthe are on the hill and iced gets um but seeing that with no sound or just like you know the 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 grunts from the actors and the extras and stuff it feels super super empty and it's almost like everybody's in school like play fighting (laughs) Uh, so it's just like really bad but when the sound is added I think the the sound is what brings the picture alive 
but the music is what gives it emotion and power um so i would be doing like sword sounds and whatever and then sending that back and then do those sounds are they recorded live or there's like a stock that you oh uh, as an assistant you need to build a huge library of sound effects um something i learned very 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 quickly i now have i think a two terabyte drive of pure just sound effects um which i still add to every job that i'm on so um, you get them yeah. recorded or you find them I, them so i would do some temp foley myself um and a key there was a key moment of uh which i'll there was a when the first trailer for the witcher came out there's a moment where Geralt um takes a bag of coin from a guy in a bar he's asked him said about the devil stealing grain um and they're bartering and Geralt grabs the bag of coin and there's no sound. There's no real sound. So, you know, you want to make it sound like there is money in there. And I couldn't find a decent sound effect. So what I did, I emptied my wallet of all the change I had in there, took off my shoes and sock, put the money in my sock and would like, just recorded this with like with my phone, but would drop the sound you know drop the sock with the coins in my hand to get the sound of it being you know taken and grabbed um and i think i think in the actual i'm not sure if they swapped that out um obviously in the final thing they did but i think in the trailer i think it was still might have been my money sock um <laughs> <laughs> there you go it's a little bit <laughs> um and then there's stuff like um adr which is autonomous dialogue replacement um and that's whenever a line needs to be delivered different or it's a new line that's been written that wasn't in the script that they're adding they've added after they finished filming and that needs to be put in so i would do i used to like do i used to do voices um as a kid so when i got told what adr was and you know we'd be asked to do temp adr for extras or for cast when it's like new lines and stuff i would you know go and just record on my phone you know the new line so when you and say adr meaning hmm. it's kind of like a placeholder and then yes yeah, so that's the exactly actual... it yeah exactly that um placeholder and then when the cut's ready to go to you know have proper adr done it goes to the adr guys they'll get the actor in Sometimes they'll have like my dialogue in there, listen to it, they'll take it out. The actor will record their stuff properly, comes back to us, we'll lay the real thing in. Um, so ours is really to either for tone, for pacing and time, it'll just, just depend. But I, <laughs> and that was sort of like one of the key things that was, um, that swung me getting a uh, an audition for season oh. two. Yeah, let's hear about that. <laughs> um, I'm going to apologize to Lauren now um, because I, so skip back. I, I said, I've been doing small acting things whilst I was on season one. So every now and again, I'd jump out for a day for rehearsals or leave early for rehearsal at night or a show at night, uh, depending on what I was doing. And again, being a fan of the Witcher world, I, um, a few of us would joke that it'd be fun for, for me to be in season two. So and I was like, obviously, show like it's never going to happen, not in a million years. Um, and then it was um, Liana who said that I should, you know, just ask if I can audition. And I was like, it seems a bit, mm. she's like, what, you know, what you got to lose? What The only thing they can say is yes or no. And I was like, yeah, you know, but I've got feelings, so they could be hurt. But, you know, I digress. <laughs> <laughs> um, so some of the other assistants and I, they would sort of joke and go, you know, it'd be fun to see me. It was Andrash, who would say, as a um, Nilfgaard soldier who would then get stabbed in the eye. And I was like, cheers. Mm -hmm. um, but it was James who would say that he could see me as a witcher um they're like sharpening my sword at one point and i was like oh, okay i can't see it but cool anyway those are sort of jokes that we'd make in the uh, in the cut rooms so sort of one day um this was i know i'd only been there for probably like 
four or five, five or six months, sorry. And I wrote Lauren an email. Um, just it was the world's worst, most babbling email. I don't know if you can tell, but I just rambled a lot. Um, and I sort of said, you know, I'm, I really love the show. I'm, I, I do act, and I'm, mm -mm, but could I audition for season two if they haven't already cast season two? Because I didn't know how early on that they were casting. Um, so Laura, <laughs> Lauren got back to me um and you know said that i wasn't being cheeky or anything and you know she would introduce me to uh the casting director uh we'd have a chat about it sorry sophie holland sophie yeah. holland indeed yes yeah um and she you know we discussed it when she got back because she was still in um la at this time um and she was supposed to come back yeah i think it was in june but Obviously, there were things, we, there were reshoots and whatever, and obviously we were ex exceedingly busy trying to get the episodes all locked at that point. So, and I, you know, I can't really sort of go, Lauren. Uh, so I just sort of left it. Mm. Um, never spoke about it uh, again or whatever. And, you know, it, Lauren, executive producer, showrunner, it's just, you know, uh, it's already, I think I was already feeling bad enough that I sent this terrible email. Anyway, so... That was that. I show comes out, everything's good, fine. And then over sort of the Christmas, January break, the industry sort of goes quite quiet. Um, yeah, sort of December through till the beginning of February. It's those two months are quite quiet. I had just been asked if I wanted to um, be assistant editor on another show, which I just said yes to. And the very next day, I got an email uh out of the blue from sophie saying that i had been put forward for a role um and could i come audition and <laughs> i remember i i was actually i was sat where i am now and it was i sort of read it read it again i was like this is it was insane they like the 12 year old school kid in me was just like eh. <laughs> on the outside it's like even though it's only me here i'm still just trying to sort of be cool and just sort of okay <laughs> so um uh spoke with sophie and then uh went to go down and do my audition uh and i was obviously like making sure that i was off script by that point i, could, I couldn't go in and and still have my script with me um i couldn't i just couldn't do that uh, and yeah, it went, I felt it went reasonably well. I always sort of score my own performances just to mm. see, you know, how how I think, because um, if I do something terrible, I'll be the first person to be like, that was a mm. bit shit. Um, Did you know you were auditioning for a Witcher role? Not until, well, no, when I got the email, um, it said, it didn't say who or in what capacity, it just said for, you know, for, one of our witches mm. and that was the insane part for me i again i had a inkling of where season two was gonna go while still on season one uh, i didn't know anything but i had an inkling um and the fact that yeah it was for one of the witches it's it just seemed so surreal so i was from that moment i was super focused um and just trying to you know i was like okay i'm gonna do my lines i've got to get back in the gym because you know look at who i'm gonna be around <laughs> um <laughs> i yeah it was um i literally from that moment was just everything was here tunnel vision just you know get myself set for it it was insane um but i didn't get told that i'd got the role straight away i think it took about another two and a bit weeks um two couple of weeks or so and in that couple of those couple of weeks, uh, talking about like editorial jobs and stuff, and I just couldn't focus. Um, but you know, uh, did you have to say no to the other job? I, I had to tell the editor that asked me what was happening because I wouldn't like it would be hard to sort of go. Oh, I'm going to go do another editorial job. Um, like I can't work with you. So I sort of had to say it was going to be an acting job. Um, I couldn't say what it was, but I was like, not gonna be able to because a really like big 
acting gig has come up uh, and they were super super cool with it thankfully um they understood and they were like go you know there'll be plenty of chances to work together afterwards um but i still did go out and help out on that show for a couple of weeks mm. um then finished on that when i went to go across for like my fitting and costume makeup eyes um and all that stuff um so it sort of everything sort of fell perfectly in time um and i'm again i'm super super grateful to the editor who sort of asked me to work with them and then was like you can go do this mm-hmm. we'll work together in the future so yes thank you how did you feel when you got the role like did you get an email or a phone call uh i t- so to get told i got the role um phone call and again i can't say too much about that phone call uh, but i again it was one of those things of i was told and it's i heard it but i didn't hear it and it sort of went and i was like a little bit i just felt i just felt like my heart like even though i've been told yes i got it uh, i was still like and on the phone again try to be sort of cool oh no you know thank you very much it's great it's amazing thank you but like inside just (laughs) um yeah (laughs) that's fun (laughs) reminds me when um I was dating my husband so basically we were in touch with someone else who want kind of asked me if he wanted to go out with me again and um I was very nervous he would say no (laughs) <laughs> and I got the phone call and um, the guy said, yes, that he said he wanted to go out again. And I was just jumping up and down without, <laughs> without like making any noise on the phone. <laughs> but, <laughs> I was very excited. You know, absolutely. Yeah, sure. <laughs> 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 no, good. Yeah. So, yeah. So for the second season, you did Everard. You played Everard. And then you also did, what was the thing? Second assistant uh-huh. director. So uh, editor, had, editor, uh, editor, okay, editor, 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 yeah. All right, <laughs> all right. I, I just, <laughs> sorry. No, that's all right. Yeah, so what was, what do you do and how is it hard to juggle both where you're like extremely busy? And they um, eight episodes again. Yeah, so I, again, I was across all eight apps for uh, a second assistant editor. A uh, second assistant editor is essentially like the first assistant's assistant. So I was like the assistant, the first assistant editor's assistant, basically. Um, and two of the assistants I had worked with on season one. Uh, the other assistant I had met before, but like we all got on um, and sort of knew, you know, where we were with things. So it was all great. Um, but I had been tentatively, tentatively asked if I would do season two whilst on season one, I was like, yeah, because I didn't think, you know, it'd be acting. And then I got the acting gig, well, got the acting part of it first. And when I went to go sign my contract, um, I was officially asked then, um, as uh, one of the uh, exec producers saw me, was like, I heard you got a role. And I was like, yes. <laughs> so we still come back to the cutting room. So. Oh, if you'll have me, yeah, sure, why not? Um, and it was literally uh, so I started my first actual shooting days were the very beginning of September, and I started back in the cutting rooms at the beginning of October. This is 2020. Um, so I would be, you know, at the studio on set. For, so this was you know, after because the panel was March, so this was after you guys already returned back to filming. Yes, yeah, so we were because my first filming day was supposed to be, I think, the 26th of March. <laughs> We went into lockdown on the 23rd. <laughs> so it was just like, oh, I was wounded. Um, so excited. Were you you that know. It wouldn't happen? Uh, no, just went into lockdown for four months. Um, obviously, I'd gone, had, you know, makeup and eyes and whatever else. Done it all, you know, a couple of times, you know. Um, I was set to go film. And then three days before the first day of filming, <laughs> lockdown. Um, but throughout that time, I was speaking with a couple of the other guys I knew were on board, like Chewy, like Jota, um, Paul. Um, but Paul, I hadn't told Paul that I was going to be a witcher. I got talking to him from editorial standpoint, um, you know, on social media and stuff. And, and then you I think it know was, each other socially before you acted together? Uh, no, I, no, no, I didn't know any of the guys. Um, I had met some of 
the like you know the cast and crew who on you know the end of season one um but the guys who joined in season two um so like essentially all the all pretty much all the witches i didn't know any of them before we started um i met chewy and hota when we went for our fittings and stuff it was the three of us um the other guys i hadn't met but i started talking to paul um through social media at first and we actually built up a relationship during lockdown mm. uh, which was interesting um mm. but yeah so um well i've just lost my train of thought uh, september october oh, filming oh that was it sorry yes um so yeah was, first filming day was the beginning of september now been filming obviously on and off for those four, four weeks and then went back to the cutting room or started at the cutting rooms and yeah it would be I would be in the cutting room Sunday some days and then when I'm filming just go to set next day I'll be doing my own rushes <laughs> um watching the footage back going oh that was a shit take that was, a, that was <laughs> all right that one was terrible um and yeah the only time there was one day um which should have been harder than I thought. Um, there was a day I was in the cutting rooms on a Friday until reasonably late. Um, and I think I got back at about half, I got home about half nine in the evening. Mm. Then the call sheet came through because we were filming Saturday. Uh, <laughs> and the call sheet being like your, uh, just, your schedule or something. Yeah, for what we're filming the next day, what time we're getting picked up. Uh, what time we need to be at the studio and that sort of thing what scenes um <laughs> yeah i had a um three a quarter past three pickup for a 4 30 call time oh my God. so i literally just, i looked at the time and was like if i want to get any sort of decent amount of sleep i have to go to sleep right at this second <laughs> so but i just got home so i still need to shower i'm not gonna eat but i was like shower okay cool we'll shower go straight to bed i think i had about two and a half or three hours sleep nice. <laughs> alarmed up get ready go to the studio and I didn't miss a beat that day not like acting wise but I just didn't feel like I'd only had two or three hours sleep it was just that one was pure excitement because it was a really fun scene for me to do I won't say which one but it was oh, no. a really good fun <laughs> scene for me I'm that curious day. to see, yeah. they can see <laughs> I bought that <laughs> <laughs> make your team are amazing <laughs> So yeah, uh, that's the only time I think it should have been quite hard, but it wasn't. But the, getting the balance of going to, you know, going to set and then being in the cutting rooms, it was um, a, a learning curve uh, for sure. But it was, regardless, it was, you know, it was a fun experience because it's something that I could never, I mean, like early on people said, you, you know, you won't be able to do both, you have to choose, it'll be acting or editing. And then uh, I got to do both in one show on the same season. So, yeah, yeah I was uh, immensely, immensely, you know, privileged to be able to do that. And, and I thank everybody who let it happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm glad that, you know, you also had the, the confidence to say, yeah, I can do it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, yeah, of course. In the back of my mind, what have I done? No, it's, it's, it's fine. It was um, you literally just have to sort of think about things differently because, Obviously, on on set, you sort of have to, you know, know, you know how you how you're moving when you you know you block a scene out. It's like remember that it's it's it, for me. It was slightly more creative, even though like when I had lines, it was like remember lines. But at my stage of editorial, it's quite um, it's it's sort of very systems based. You know, it's you know, exports turnovers and it's technical stuff basically um so i could easily go between the two because i don't have to use the same part of my brain constantly think thankfully Mm. were you doing the same thing for the second season that you did the first season like doing foley and stuff like that or (coughs) sorry we're not doing that yes that was still a large part of it um but there was sort of more so that was again that was like the a bit of a creative side but this time it was more being on sort of like turnovers and um playouts and just sort of sorry can, can you define more. turnovers and playouts oh so <laughs> so turnovers oops, turnovers are 
where you're passing things over to other people in the creative process. So you can be turning over for the visual effects team, sound team, music, um, picture for grade. It's when you pass over uh, all the material that you have to those teams so they can work and then you get back their work and then lay into the cut mm. and stuff. Um, so yeah, it's all sort of technical and specs and workflows. Um, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's, yeah. But I was on marketing um, this year. So the initial trailer, I think, went out for um, Witchercon. Mm. That was like, you know, handed it off to the marketing department who made the trailer and then it came back to us. And I had to rebuild it with the official shots that didn't have like watermarks and stuff on it. Mm. Um, so I was like the first person in the world to see that trailer really? <laughs> uh, in its like complete um, sort of clean form, um, which was pretty amazing. Yeah, um, really but yeah, cool. so yeah, until, you know, until my departure, it was very focused on the uh, marketing side of things. Cool. So what was like, um, you know, when you, when you said you had to wake up at like four in the morning, um, first of all, I'm curious, like, why do you have to wake up so early? <laughs> and what was, what was an average like filming like? So I, I was in this extra once on like a TV show and my impression was like, oh my goodness, this is a lot of waiting around. <laughs> I was like, why didn't I bring a book? <laughs> so what, what was that like? <laughs> um, so yeah, I, again, um, work as an extra, I, I know that struggle and it is a lot of waiting, isn't it? And not being told what's going on. Um, for us with this, it was like an acting side of things. It's obviously with COVID, it would be, we would get picked up, go to the studio, go to our trailer. And well, before we, sorry, even before that, it would be, we would obviously be going get swabbed and tested and stuff. And then it would be, we'd sit, literally be in our trailers until we got a negative test result. <laughs> we got a result back. It was literally just like, and we couldn't really mingle with each other. We had to obviously stay apart. So we'd be shouting across to each other uh, if we wanted to have a conversation. They'd be like, yeah, you're right, yeah, you know. Um, so yeah, that was, a lot of that was just waiting for that. And then once that had done, it would be into makeup. It'd be, you know, into all getting ready. Um, and so my, my makeup, which I adored, um, Devs and the team did an amazing job of making Everard look badass. Um, <laughs> yeah, usually, I'll be in the chair. Awesome. Very striking green eyes. Amazing. And then the scars, I think it was eight scars, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight scars. Um, nice. uh, yeah, that was, that was amazing. I was in the chair usually for about an hour and 20 each time. Um, but on this other day, where I had to go in early, it was um, a bigger makeup. And that one, I think, was that one was probably just more than two hours, mm -hmm. and then I had to have my face done. So I think I was in like for 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 almost four hours of makeup that day. <laughs> what do you do while you're on that chair? You like pause, listen to podcasts. Um, I I would talk to um, my makeup artist a lot, um, a lot of the time, but I because yeah, I didn't want to have sort of my headphones on plus I was like I, I did my own hair which means I didn't really have to do anything to it I'd literally just put it to like one side and back and that'd be it um but I would sort of for some reason I I would do my hair before I got into makeup so I wouldn't ever like have my headphones on um but I would yeah I talked to my makeup artist a lot and sometimes I'd just be going over my lines or whatnot there <laughs> I have to say this because this is like like Kim, uh, Kim Bonnie, who plays Vesemir, I love him to death. There was like times where I'd be in the makeup chair and I'd be like, you know, have my eyes closed, makeup's going on. And then my makeup artist would stop. And I, you know, I wouldn't think of anything of it, think, you know, brush is being cleaned or changed, or whatever. And I'd just feel these arms around. <laughs> and without opening my eyes, I knew it was Kim every time. He's just like, morning, Kim. Aww, <laughs> morning. Nice. Bless it. I like he's genuinely i mean every, everybody genuinely super lovely um but kim there was something about kim um whenever like he was around i see completely why he was you know cast as besomir as like the father figure for all of us he's there's something magnetic about him and his laugh is so 
<laughs> infectious and contagious. It's it's brilliant. He's just just wonderful um but yeah so i'd be like in my chair and i just like feel and on that morning um i can't I don't, like that morning was such a blow i think because i was tired i think i'm i might may, may have even dozed mm. off in the chair for a change but um <laughs> <laughs> um yeah that that day was just super fun that was it yeah because i didn't see i don't think i saw paul and yaz that that day um until um we were until we were filming i don't think Either way, sorry, that's me digressing. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. So, I mean, your character, uh, spoilers ahead, um, <laughs> is the first one killed by Siri. So were you, were you disappointed that you were killed off and, you know, couldn't come back maybe in the future? <laughs> <laughs> so with this, um, I remember, like, I got the first four scripts um, when I went to sign my contract and stuff. And then we went into lockdown and I still only had the first four. So I read the first four through like numerous times. And then um, the assistant editor for episodes five and eight uh, said that he had got the scripts for that. We were talking and he was like, yeah, I've got, I've got the, uh, you know, the last script. And I was like, oh, cool. Didn't think anything of it. And he goes, do you want me to tell you? And I was like, why? Well, he goes... <laughs> You die and I was like what <laughs> and he told me how and I was like what <laughs> um so I was like a bit mm, for like uh the from when he initially told me and sort of I let it you know it settled I didn't even think about it and then I got the scripts the last four scripts whilst in lockdown read them through and got to that and it was a bit like actually it's kind of cool I was <laughs> like it is it's a cool moment um how it's done uh sort of the what's going on behind it all i think uh it's very it's very good it's fitting it's and plus it's a scene with just you know freya and i um which was which was fun to do that morning we spoke about it um and <laughs> when i i remember when i was in the cutting rooms talking to the guys about it um and you know, we were just sort of going, they were like, how are you going to do it? And I was like, well, you know, I'm dead sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get up and like fight her. Um, but no, we just sort of said like, you know, about grabbing her wrist and staring her down and then sort of being surprised that it's her. And like, we like <clears throat> spoke to Freya about it. And she was like, you know, open the thing, spoke to Ed, the director about it. Um, yeah, no, it was just, it was really fun. And that was, okay, well, now that's out uh, in the open. That was like the makeup day um, because mm -hmm. I had this big piece Gosh. that went from, yeah, from my ears sort of down to uh, my my lower sternum. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously that pumped blood through, <laughs> which uh, I didn't get out of my hair for three months. Um, yeah, what is it made out of? Ooh. I don't know, but all I remember is that it was like really cold. Um, and... <laughs> The very Did it first multiple times, or like once. Yes, yeah, so uh, I can actually I can remember it was seven takes. Uh, the first four were without the blood. The last three were with. Um, so you like change your shirt every time or something? New shirt, new blood, or whatever. Uh, yeah. the shirt I think I changed once. Um, it was more I think because I was lying down where it ran. It mainly ran to like the back of my neck and my hair mm -hmm. so it was more like just keeping my hair out give it a bit of a squeeze and keep the hair out of the way and that mm -hmm. was pretty much it uh, but yeah no that was it was that was a really really fun day um yeah that was a really really fun day <laughs> you're like yeah i got killed it was so much fun <laughs> yeah it was <laughs> and then it was obviously like we filmed that but then obviously had to go film other because we don't film sequentially it was like now i'm going back to go film another scene next week that's in like episode five or whatever so it's just like oh no i'm still alive for now um <laughs> but yeah it's obviously i'd love for everard to have done more um of course i mean it's 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 an amazing world it's an amazing show uh but i as much as it is a bit like mm, he's gone um it's it's fun you know he you know, the fact that i you know I, I was in it i had lines uh everard is you know he does look badass mm -hmm. um and i'm with you know the the cast members and characters that that i am with in scenes it was yeah i i think it was fun the fact that i 
got a little bit of everything. It's like as far as being an actor goes, um, the experience, like the full experience of it all, is just, just sublime. Um, and I can't really ask so much more. Oh, that's so nice. <laughs> so I'm gonna ask some questions. I um, mm. I asked some of my patrons um, what they wanted to ask, and I also asked on Reddit. So I'm going okay. to ask uh, the first question. This is from Haley. Was do you watch the show? Which is clear that not only have you watched it, you've probably watched it a billion times <laughs> as you were. <laughs> <laughs> I season one I remember before it came out I had seen all eight episodes and this is no word of a lie I'd seen each of the eight episodes in full no less than 21 times <laughs> before it came wow. out wow. Um, and then season two not as much um, I still watched every single episode but I eight le- um, locked just after I left so I've seen eight only once in full like in its complete form before seeing it obviously when it's been out but yeah no i i have lived <laughs> every episode <laughs> Would you still time. watch it afterwards like on netflix just on your home computer even though you would already watched it a billion times before <laughs> Yeah, um, I, I'm i very fortunate to have like, you know, Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos. So I like watch it because we're working in 1080p. Uh, it's not like, you know, fully jazzed up. And I've seen obviously all without the visual effects. Now to finally see it with all the visual effects completed because you obviously go through different temp stages of VFX. Um, mm. Yeah, it's nice to just sort of sit down and watch it through for what it is. Uh, yeah, so yeah, no, I, I have... I, I still do watch it even when it's done. Nice. So another question we got from Reddit was, do you play the games, which you said you, you did, and that you haven't fully finished World 3. Did you yeah. do any other stuff like Gwent or Thrillbreaker, which I still I didn't look up what that was? Did you read the books? Did you want to read the books? I played Thronebreaker um, a little bit, um, and we spoke about playing Gwent on season one during lunch times. <laughs> Never got to do it, so I haven't actually officially played Gwent yet uh, but i've played throwing break i've partly played all the three computer games but not in depth and not completed um as for the books i gone through the first two books i'm uh, obviously they're all the short stories i'm now going into the novels okay yeah so i've read um the last wish and i am not sure if i want to read the rest because i feel like i don't want to get spoilers for the tv show <laughs> Even though I'm not sure I, I'm to follow it. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I think I think the books are, are definitely worth a read. Like I know that again, this stuff that we we speak about. Some of the guys I know, like they are like super hardcore fans, you know, in regards to like the books and stuff. Um, and so I know certain bits that happen in the books. And for what I do know, it's definitely worth reading them, even if you're a fan of the TV show. Mm-hmm. Just like the games are worth playing. The show gives a different spin on, like it's focused on the on the books, but it does give like, you know, a different spin. Um, so if you're a fan of The Witcher as a whole, as a universe, jump in. Okay. So um, another person, Erin, asked what your favorite moments on set were, and if you got to go home with any souvenirs. <laughs> um favorite moment on set i i don't know a particular favorite moment i there was never a day that i went to set that i did not like feel like it was surreal or that there was a slump in like what was going on even when you know they're setting up to do uh different takes or you know just different setups and there can be a little bit of waiting around in that there was never a moment that I was a bit like (sighs) it was every single moment was just phenomenal from either getting hugs from Kim or actually I'll tell a very quick story uh which involves Henry which I hope he doesn't mind me saying um there was a day filming episode three scene one so we were outside um at the keep and I was on top of the wall um and I had like you know I was fully dressed had my lenses in and we're all prepped and I'm on a, I'm on a wire. So if I fall, I don't, you know, injure myself. Uh, I was talking to uh, some of the ADs whilst I was up there, just having a laugh and whatnot. Cool. Anyway, Henry comes out and again, the lenses, I can't see anything. Really? My lenses. Yeah. I'm 
I'm like they're a prescription. I have my assess and everything, <laughs> but still, I just couldn't see anything in the lenses. Anything like sort of further than this. So wow. you ever see me like squinting? It's just because I can't see anything. Wait, so um, I, I wear lenses, but so is it because they're colored and they're covering like yes, the yeah, because obviously your pupil uh, constricts and dilates. <laughs> obviously, the lens doesn't. So there'll be points where, especially when it's dark, your your eyes have gone, hmm, but the, not oh. letting any more light come in. Oh. um so yeah there were moments i really couldn't see I'm that's really bad for being a witcher <laughs> well um yeah, yeah. <laughs> we make it work um so this particular day i'm up on the wall i'm back you know 25 feet up or whatever it was and sort of henry's come out people are about but i'm over the archway so i don't know if there's anybody underneath me or whatever so henry comes out first time i'm seeing him is like gives a wave don't know it's to me uh, so, and that's partly because of lenses and I don't know if anybody's beneath me. So he sort of waves and I don't want to be that crazy. I'm like, oh my God, Henry's waving at me. Um, so I just sort of did this like really little thumbs up right by my side. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, and I was like, ah, okay, it was to me. <laughs> like, damn. Uh, anyway, so sharp, I've come down off the wall and we're sort of talking amongst us, you know, with some of the crew and so forth. I um, can't remember what we are talking about. It was talking and I say something and then Henry is sat right next to me like but he was sat on this like little stone or log thing <laughs> and again because of my lens didn't see that he was right <laughs> beside me um and I was just like oh you know sorry Henry didn't see that he's like oh no it's fine he's you know gracious about it um I said to him I was like was it me you were waving at when I was on the wall he was like yes yeah, just say good morning and I was like and I said I didn't you know know it was me because of that and I said because the lens isn't that and he you know I said that's why I sort of gave this really little thumbs up just in case I didn't want to be like that crazy guy oh my god Henry so he started laughing I was like and he's like no no it was you and I was like uh, no now but yeah no he's that was just another funny moment um mm -hmm. on set and we had so many moments um that we'd just be laughing about ridiculous stuff um actually I'm gonna before we sort of just move on I'm gonna just ask have you seen the um sort of making of season two like behind the scenes thing on uh, i saw the season one making of i don't i, I don't think it's, i haven't seen season two yet which thanks for reminding me i should watch Ooh, yeah. give that a watch there's a bit near the end of that where i think we we're filming I, i'm gonna assume it was episode six and i'm talking to paul and anna and that just sort of gives you a sense of what things were like in between takes it's us having a laugh me messing about um it that's like it was always always like there was never a moment that was a bit like oh I just want this lady bird because it genuinely was so much fun that's really nice to hear I know um sometimes I feel like people can forget about the purpose of entertainment essentially and like yeah. it can become something that's stressful and I think it like really defeats the purpose like you're here to you know enrich people's lives or entertain people and so it's great to hear that the process also was fulfilling and fun Oh gosh, yeah, it's, and I think in, like, this is a lot of people's dream jobs. Obviously not everybody, it's not for everybody, but I genuinely know that there are some people who, and again, I know some amazing actors who haven't been in a show, let's say, as large as this, um, and I don't take it for granted ever. So I will, like, you know, I won't turn up and just be like, oh, because I am extremely fortunate extremely fortunate to be doing something like this you know every single day was like this is crazy but amazing and because you know I might not ever get another <laughs> acting gig again so you know <laughs> enjoy it um and that's the only thing I would sort of say to any other actor um regardless of where they are in their career enjoy it because mm -hmm. you know right good lesson about every day in life I, I always <laughs> you know think about like the fact that we can all die at any moment, you know, it's mm -hmm. a little bit of control. <laughs> True. Um, yeah, I guess back to the other question, did you get any mm -hmm. souvenirs from set? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe, okay. Not that you'll Maybe. Know, but yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> officially, no. Um, I, I, there is there's something. Um, I think you want a little piece to take away with you, like for, for memory's sake, um and i i have something i won't say what but i have something i think didn't you i think it was you who posted like you've all got presents um some kind of like what's your medallion 
was it? Or like a statuette kind of thing? A little set. I'm looking at mine. As soon as you said that, <laughs> mine is on my little table thing in front of me. Yes, there's um, that was a uh, gift from Henry. Mm. Yeah. Right. Oh, so speaking of Henry, I was not going to raise. I wasn't going to ask about other actors because I'm like, this is an interview with you. Uh, but when I asked on Reddit about questions people wanted to ask, I got a very funny question. Let me repeat it to you. Um, okay. I, I pull it the totally inappropriate Henry Gavel question, <laughs> but it's very very funny. So, so I'm going to put it up. Um, let's get it. Yeah, so I'm part of, um, I joined a lot of like Witcher fandoms and one of the, one of the Facebook groups that I'm in, the Witcher content is basically just pictures of Henry Cavill and people lusting over him. And I'm like, okay, I thought this was a Witcher group. <laughs> <laughs> maybe discussing like theories or like talking about the characters and their I don't know plot relationships to, like magic something but no it's just mm -hmm. <laughs> I have seen at the after season one dropped um I ended up seeing some things that I can't unsee <laughs> that fans have made or said when I'm just like wow it's well, like I just like again, to, like to see it there. Like at the moment, like with season two, I haven't really looked for stuff. I've been, I've got a weird relationship since this has come out. I mean, obviously, of course, I love it, and it's you know, but I've sort of more just tried to keep myself busy just because of things that I've got going on. Um, and there's a little part of me that goes, I don't really want to know too much about like what people say about me, if anything, or whatever. Um, but yeah, if I at the end of season one, and I think this is probably the reason why there were some things cropping up, especially like for me on Twitter. I'm not really, I don't really go to Reddit often, um, but like on Twitter, there were some things that I was like, <laughs> "Wow, um, yeah, yeah," yeah. Uh, and you know, um, nobody like I you know, spending time with the other with the other actors and stuff. Um, get to know them on a you know on a basic level but you never really truly know somebody um but from my experience um everybody genuinely lovely everybody every single person lovely um but i see why some people again particularly let's say super fans will lust over some people um just each to their own <laughs> at the end of the day that's all i'll say this is why I'm happy I do uh, mainly like webtoons because they're they're not real. They're drawn characters. So like if I'm lusting over a cartoon character, I, it's it's not a real person. Like I I don't feel like I try very hard to avoid uh, objectifying stuff like a real person like that. You know, mm, like they're yeah, people. Yeah. And like yeah, obviously like some people are paid to be pretty, right? <laughs> but but like you know we try to treat people like they're people with personalities and brains and emotions and feelings you know? right you know, people families they go home and live their lives at the end of it all and that's one thing that I think is really good about doing stuff like this is because you see an actor being an actor on screen and they're a character and then you know once you get to a crazy level of fame you paparazzi and it's like <sighs> people are like we're just people at the end of the day and that's something you sort of learn very early on um again I've been fortunate to sort of either run into or meet sort of like some really hugely famous people um but just sort of remember they're just people at the end of the day like again you go to you know anywhere in central london you'll bump into somebody um <laughs> there are again funny stories that i've had bumping into people but i won't divulge mm -hmm. uh, but and every now and again there's a, a moment of like holy crap it's so and so but you just remember like they are just people we're all just people you know just the jobs that we love <laughs> so yeah okay. it's very comforting so i'll read the totally inappropriate henry cowell question and then the more mm. questions <laughs> the totally inappropriate question was did you ever get to be in the presence of henry cowell okay starts not normal if so what was it like to be in his presence did you get to touch henry cowell <laughs> if so how did he feel what other senses can you describe from your Henry Cavill experience? Scent, sound, taste. If you could give this experience to someone, why would it be me? 
<laughs> okay, a lot of that I am not going to answer. Uh, <laughs> I did. Um, oh, first I, you didn't have to answer anything, by the way. <laughs> oh, no, no, I, it's um, all I will say is uh, he is a lovely guy. Um, he is professional. Uh, he is nice. He's respectful. Uh, like first day came round and said hello to each of us individually, um, which automatically you sort of go like again being on set because it can be a moment of oh wow it's you know so and so, but you're obviously there professionally, and you're there and it is still a job, so it's you know and I don't like to sort of go to people and be all like oh ah oh ah there are moments to chat. We'll chat. I, you know, I, I was fortunate enough to chat with him and, um, you know, just talk about stuff. Um, but he, you know, he he very graciously came and said hello to each of us, um, individually the first day on set, and then he'd always say, you know, hello when we were working together. So yeah, he he's a nice guy. He's and he is a guy. He's he's human. He is a man. He is, you know, he's a but he's professional. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Well, thanks for answering that question. So another person was asked, would you be friends with your character? (laughs) Okay, so one thing, when you're given a character, you sort of obviously have to delve, but you ask questions of what the character is like, because, you know, it's never written unless it's like, you know, so-and-so is a certain way that gives you a foundation. Um, One of the things I... I wanted Everard to be like was a little bit sarcastic um and there's a line in episode six which I think sort of captures that and it wasn't written it was one I did completely by accident it was the um if you say so when Mm. Triss when we're accusing Triss of being associated with uh, the firefucker and I think it was the last take we're going through, you know, shooting the scene, and she looked at me, and I just no idea where it came from. I said, "Yeah, if you, yeah, if, if you, you know," and I sort of I didn't mean to say that, but it got kept in. Um, but that was sort of me channeling my my inner Everard. If I could sit down and have a drink with him, I would. Um, but I don't know if I would actually be friends with him um i'm like quite laid back and easy going and far too chatty uh he is less so which character would you be friends with um on the whole witcher Um, (laughs) i don't like i love joey i absolutely adore joe i don't know if i could like have yaski around me too much um (laughs) Who, if I could call one of the one of the characters up and be like, "Let's go hang out for a drink," um, I would love to sit down with Vesemir because of his wisdom. He's he's a cool, calm, collected guy. Um, very knowledgeable, very wise, and just sort of chilled. And I like chilled Geralt's got a lot going on uh <laughs> Lambert <laughs> how did Joey say I'm, I'm sad and complicated <laughs> <laughs> there you go <laughs> um yeah Lambert uh, Lambert's a bit out there um I think Yennefer's got too much going on <laughs> yeah I, I I I would like to poke the mind of Tissaia as well mm. Mm. She's I actually like to say mm-hmm. I went on cameo last week um, to raise money for Ukraine, and I was like, mm-hmm. "Yes!" I and I, you know, paid her whatever to the cameo to record a message for my husband because he's a big to say a fan. So I'm like, "Yes!" I got awesome, <laughs> awesome. She, she's lovely. So another last question from Reddit was: If you could choose to play another character in The Witcher, who would it be? Ooh. Um. Oh, Stregobor. Oh, okay. Mm, just because he's a 
He's a dog of a man, isn't he? <laughs> uh, Lars obviously is amazing and does a wonderful job. Uh, but I gravitate to, let's say, to bag. I love to sort of play mischievous bad people. Um, and I think that Stregobor, he he he's just a a dog, isn't he? Uh, <laughs> um, but again, Lars does an amazing job. So oh, I, I couldn't be that. I couldn't do a better job. I couldn't do a better job. Well, I think people can do you know equally well and just can be different. You know? mm, true. 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 Thank you. <laughs> Now, so I don't know if you can tell us this, but do you have any plans to continue with The Witcher? I guess from an editorial perspective. Now that um, <laughs> unfortunately, I can't say anything. Um, there's nothing, uh, um, let's say, laid out officially at the moment. Um, so yeah, uh, it's anybody's guess. I could. I might pop up back in editorial. I might not. I might pop up, you know, doing that's something. That's might. Sorry. That's the ghost of Everard. <laughs> I, I would love to see the ghost of Everard. Uh, <laughs> um, and I think in the books, Yennef can bring back people from the dead. Mm-hmm. So you know, <laughs> come on, Yen. No, uh, no, I, I, I don't know. I, um, I, I love the Witcher world, and if I can dabble back in. I I absolutely will. I the people I worked with, the people I um, have just met throughout it all, the experiences that I've learned. Uh, it this considering it's such a, a huge show, um, I have learned so much in these past what three and a half years from working on uh, the first two seasons on The Witcher, um, and there's a lot more to learn. I think for me personally. It's a it's a perfect place to learn, um, just because of the scope and scale of it, um, and I love it. So yeah, if if I can dabble in, if I can be anywhere in it, I probably would. If the opportunity arose, will anything? I don't know. Who knows? Okay, so now the last couple of questions, mm-hmm. um, just some more personal questions about um, you know how you think and stuff like that. So. Um, do you have what are your, who are your role models, either either professionally or personally, and why? Hmm. Um, that's a very cool. I don't often sort of sit and think about that sort of thing. Not just not that I don't want to. It's I just sort of never really consider it. If there's an actor that I've looked at and admired their career, um, that I sort of go. I aspire to, you know, even be, you know, 1% of that, it would be someone like Samuel L. Jackson. Mm -hmm. Um, He's, you know, he doesn't mind taking smaller roles. He doesn't mind dying. He can lead. He could like, he's funny. He can play angry, can play good, bad. Like he is just like the range is insane. Um, and he's just a cool dude. Uh, mm. uh, yeah, he's, uh, you know, he's done amazing films. He's done films that haven't been as good as others. But yeah, no, he, the fact that he, and he doesn't mind it, like that's something that I've always gone. Yeah. yeah. In my day to day life, um, I, I have a lot of people who I'm extremely grateful for that I've learned a lot from. And I will like I've again throughout being in this this uh, industry and the careers that I'm you know walking uh, down. Um, I've just been fortunate to meet some great people. Um, one of the best people I know is somebody I don't I don't or haven't worked directly with, but has taught me a lot um it's uh, a guy called uh, keith mason who is our vfx editor on the witcher um he's just a brilliant guy uh his you know career has been you know illustrious um and he like he he just says things as they are i <laughs> he's just brilliant and he's somebody that like you know i um when i get a chance to talk to him he'll just sort of 
this is great about the industry this is not so great follow that don't follow that or that person whatever um uh, i'm extremely grateful to lauren um because she i've learned like again indirectly but i've learned a lot from her just uh in regards to going through something like a show this big um there are a lot of people like oh, my mother i love dearly um <laughs> she uh she she absolutely keeps me grounded but i i have a laugh with my mother a lot um and regardless of what i do good bad big small she's she's like my rock she um the great thing with like i had about the relationship with my mother is like we have banter mm -hmm. uh mostly at her expense mm -hmm. uh <laughs> But, you know, um, my, my siblings, I've got two brothers, um, sister, they, they all have been, you know, amazing throughout. Um, and I've just like, keep amazing and good people around you is something I'd always say. Um, even if your circle started out like this when you were like a teenager and is now like that, um, they are the people that matter. And these people like professionally, like professional friends um and family and like personal closer friends they they all feed into you know who i am as a person what i do uh keep me grounded keep me laughing um lift me when i'm having moments that are a bit so yeah um I, i've just got some good people around me that's great to hear so yeah, um, it kind of leads into one of the questions I'm going to end off on, but we'll we'll come back to that in a bit. Um, what drives you when you wake up in the morning? What is your like? What's your mind focused on? Just constantly, I've got to keep pushing forward. Um, there are some days where I like I'm always a morning person. I'll get up sort of like five half five mm -hmm. six o'clock every day <laughs> uh, <laughs> i don't do nights are hard for me <laughs> um i have to really like to stay up but i'll wake up in the morning and i'll always try and get as much done in the mornings as i can but i also i i know that like as much as i i, I have achieved especially in the last few years i've still got a long way to go um and it's not about like, you know, being up here and achieving this and the other. It's just more so. Yeah, so that's falling again. Sorry. I literally just, <laughs> no, 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 I just sort of half caught that. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, it's fine. Like... I've, I'll tell you what the problem is. It's because <laughs> you saw that I obviously had the leak. Um, oh no so like i like we had a storm here about three weeks ago i lost part of the roof <laughs> and oh like, that, my, okay. you know, yeah clear. yeah okay. yeah 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 and like everything like my entire place is just damp so <laughs> my actual um kit that i had to actually hold that up just ruined um <laughs> ruined and obviously nothing with that because it's all because i live in a damp you know, <laughs> sorry, it's not just life. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's fine. I was um, I was once recording like this song. It was like a mm. comedy spoof thing, and I also put like a black sheet in the bag, and like I had to do a million takes because it kept falling down. And I was like, oh, no. <laughs> especially like you just got something really good, or you're in the flow or something, and then yeah, oh. I'll put it out one last time purely for continuity. Okay. Um, <laughs> please excuse me. So sorry about this. Okay. <laughs> yes, I've, I've been cracking up the whole time. I'm going to try to have a straight face for the last question. <laughs> sorry, I'm really sorry. I apologize. <laughs> okay, last two questions. Um, if there is one line that you would say is like your line that epitomizes, you know, your approach to life. What is it? That epitomizes my my approach to life. <laughs> Blend in, then stand out. Oh, okay. that's how. I, that's one thing I've always. Whenever I go into any situation, um, 
I never want to be the first person to be like noticed. I, I, I don't see myself as a big character in that way. And I think somebody who goes into it looking for that usually isn't, they're chasing something. I like to go into something and just sort of, you know, be there, realize what's going on, assess, and then be like, if I can sort of stand out in any way, then I'll stand out. So yes, blend in, then stand out. Okay. Yeah, I'm probably more one of those stand out in front of people. <laughs> but which is why you mentioned like who would you be friends with? I'd be like, mm. yes, yes, Pierre, because I love wombling on crazy characters. And yeah, my husband's one of those. He's just a drama king. So <laughs> yeah. Cool. Whenever we're at a social gathering, I'm like, you know, and you hear like the loudest group. Who's in the loudest? <laughs> <My husband. laughs> Again, it works for some people. Um, I just don't think it ever works for me. I can't. Because for me, if I do that, it feels like I'm automatically trying too hard. Mm. Um, and I think that also comes across. Once I'm, like, comfortable, then I'll be like, ha, 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 ha. As, you, as I say, my, I think one of my worst traits is that I just yap too much. Uh, <laughs> so I, until I have to, I'll... <laughs> and then it comes out <laughs> then it all comes out <laughs> all right and um, last question if you what advice would you give to people who want to get into a creative industry either whether it's acting or editorial production whatever don't be afraid to speak to people um and be gracious in defeat mm -hmm. i when i very first tried to get into um behind the scenes production stuff uh, before I got into editorial um, I went for a job I you know I saw uh, it was only like as a runner um, for a production and I went for it sent off my CV and you know, I would hear back and then I didn't get the job mm -hmm. so I emailed back and it was like you know the fact they even told they emailed me back to say I wasn't successful I was like thank you um, obviously it was still a bit like mm, but I was like thank you for taking the time to respond get my CV you know hopefully this goes well um and if you ever think that i can be useful for something get at me um and they turned around and gave me the job wow um wow just you know um and that's like there i i occasionally go and do talks and i try and help people try to get into the industry and it's yeah don't be afraid to talk to people um i got to the way I got into talking to um, the editor who actually asked me to work with them the day before I got uh, the Witcher role was I was at a networking drinks and like my mentor, she was like, oh, he's an editor. Go speak to him. And he was talking to somebody else. And I was like, oh, you know, okay, I'll go speak to him in a minute. He's talking. She's like, no, go now. And I was like, so I sort of went over and said, hi, um, I'm Nathaniel, uh, editing, you're an editor. We got talking and we got on like a house on fire and he invited me to go sit in with him for a day. And that's why I am now where I am today. Um, oh, that's awesome. I love so, that. Yeah. But people, a lot of people think that like, you know, people, it's a, I used to think it was like a really sort of, it's like a, a sort of super creative, big industry, but it's also intimidating if you're not, you know, if you've not gone through the hoops, let's say. So I didn't think there was any way unless you were, you know, you had gone to uni and, or you knew people. Um, and I didn't go to uni. I didn't, I didn't train for any of this, but it was literally just talk to people and more than often they're willing to help. Um, so yeah, don't be afraid to reach out. That's awesome. I love that philosophy. And I'll be honest, like before I asked you guys to do an interview, I was also intimidated. I was like, why would they say yes? Like I'm just a random podcast and like, I don't know them. And I was like, what's the worst that can happen? They won't answer you. Well, there's something else. No. That's that. <laughs> e exactly. And that's, you know, that's that's exactly why I'm where, where I, that's exactly why I am where I am today. That's exactly why we're now doing this. And I, I say, just remember, like at the end of the day, people are just people. Mm -hmm. um, regardless, you know, if they wear a suit, if they wear like, you know, a, uh, a uniform, whatever, people are people. And as terrible as the world is, more people have humanity than you think so yeah don't be afraid oh, that is such an inspiring message to end on so that is perfect thank you so much thank you so much for 
agreeing to talk to me. <laughs> and being so gracious with like the million timing stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but I, you know, it's probably better that we did the individual's interview, uh, mm-hmm. sorry, in the interviews individually because I like we get to talk more and yeah, yeah having five at once would probably just been too much. <laughs> Uh, cool. Genuinely, thank you so much for having me. Um, I've really enjoyed it. Um, I wish you do it again sometime. Yeah, well, hopefully we'll do the trivia part soon. So, yeah. Yes, indeed. <laughs> indeed. I have to prepare for it. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm not going to tell you what goes in it, but I have to prepare for it. <laughs> and I have got, as much as I've seen the show oh, each you- season, <laughs> I think I still need to brush up. So... No, okay. I'm, I'm placing my bets on you. You've seen it <laughs> <one time. laughs> Okay. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so so much. I have a wonderful day and we'll be in touch. <laughs> Indeed. Speak soon. All the best and thank you again. <laughs> thank you to my current patrons, Susie, Lydia Libris, Lily, Jenny, Molly, Veronica, Emily, Joe Rochelle, Saucy Tuggles, Anne Rose, Alexa, Misty, Joanne, and Melda, Esther, and Martini people, Emily, Jane, Jen, Erin, Kay, Lily, Beth. Beckett, Daranda, Christine, Sadie, Kelly, Teresa, Mrs. Castaldo, Jen, Tatiana, Louisa, and Rachel. Your support is truly appreciated.